One of the most important skills that we have to develop as software testers is modeling. That doesn't mean posing and taking photographs. That means creating representations of the world, creating partial representations of the world, incomplete representations. Representations are good enough to allow us to do something and achieve some results and some value. Now I've spoken before about visual models for software testing and how we can model the systems, how we can model our coverage. You can find that in the Eurostar conferences video list. But I recently spent some time um, thinking through what I thought testing was in a way that I could build up from first principles, a, a kind of meta model of software testing. And I'm going to run through that in this particular video. Not so that you go, aha, that's software testing, but more so that you have an example of a model. So you can see how does it match onto yours? How does, how does yours differ? How would you change it? And this is just a point in time communication of a model that I have created and will evolve. This is not how I will always think about software testing as I dive into this in more detail, because every concept that is listed in the model needs its own modeling. It needs its own expansion because every statement, every concept is ambiguous when we communicate it. If I tell you that a model is an input to testing, that's pretty high level. I haven't explained what the model is, how we use it, how it works. So you can read into that in ways that I might not intend. And I can read into the model in more ways to make it broader and cover all the things we do. The main point is we should get in the habit of trying to model how we think about testing so that we can communicate it to other people. And everything that we put out is a model. Every blog post that I've ever created, every video that I've ever created is a model. It's some communication of a model in my head. So this is a meta model of software testing. So testing for me is underpinned by models. Models are so important. Mod everything is model is based on models. We and and they're all mental models. Even if we take a diagram, the diagram in order to for me to use it properly, I have to interpret it. And then to interpret it, I have to put it in my head and it becomes a mental model. And then I'm exploring the relationship between what I have in my head, how I understand it with what I'm seeing in the diagram. It's all models. And um, sometimes the models are created by other people like requirements or user stories or scenarios, but it's all models. Testing is all about exploring models and how they relate to other things. And one of those things is the system under test. And very often we, we are comparing the model with the system under test. The most obvious superficial way of viewing testing is as a comparison process. And the system under test and the models are inputs to our testing process. Now the simplest way to view testing is that we compare the system with the model. Clearly there are different ways of doing that. Clearly we have to go beyond that. But starting from the basis of testing involves a comparison process between the model and the system creates some interesting extensions to the model because that comparison process will generate results. It will generate evidential observational output that we can use for communication. Some of that output will be positive confirmation and some of it will be negative confirmation. Positive confirmation is often viewed as a test pass by some people, but it basically means at some point in time when we did something, we observed that the system behaved the way that we expected and only to the level at which we were able to observe it. And here is some evidence that we captured in that process. So we're not saying that the system works. We're saying that it seems to work under these certain circumstances. And here's some evidence to that effect. And we also have negative confirmation. I can absolutely say that when I did this thing, I observed something I did not expect. And here is the evidence for that. Now, what's interesting is that the positive confirmation very often just leads to us saying, yeah, I saw that happen. Negative confirmation leads to an investigation process because we have to know, well, was it the model that was wrong? Was it the system under test that was wrong? Was it our process of comparing and evaluating these two things that went wrong? What was it we have to investigate to find out? Now, if the model does not match the what we're seeing in the system under test, then chances are our model needs to change. So the output action from this investigation is 
new information that causes us to reevaluate our model. The positive confirmation is just data. It matched our model. It was what we expected in the first place. We don't really have to do anything. It's the negative stuff, the, the mismatches that give us information. They're the unexpected things that we act on. Now, it could be that our comparison process, our evaluation process was wrong, our testing process was not done well enough. Perhaps the environment wasn't correct. The, uh, the wrong version of the browser, who knows what it was, but we have to understand what was involved in that process. And if the process was wrong, then we can redo that process. And that changes our model, our understanding of how we test or how we have to test this particular system with this particular model to get the information that we want. Now, sometimes if we're uh, working with a system and we find an issue with the system, we can just fix it straight away. But sometimes we don't have that direct action on the project. So we have to have a process for writing down the problem, passing the problem on to someone else to prioritize and then having someone else fix it. But ultimately that leads to changes to the system under test. And since the system under test is an input to testing, we go through that re-evaluation comparison and testing process again. Changes to the inputs trigger our actions for testing. Now, the simplest way of viewing software testing as a comparison process isn't good enough. Right? We have to go beyond just a simple comparison because we're trying to evaluate the software in different ways. Any comparison is going to be a surface level comparison where we're not really exploring the ambiguities or the details or the things that we've missed out or the risks or the gaps. We're not looking for gaps in the model. We're not looking for gaps in the implementation when we're just doing a straight comparison. When a straight comparison gives us the overlap, we need to see what is not covered, what's on the outside of that. Now that leads to uh, questions, risks, ambiguities, gaps, all of which change our model, all of which then feed into a new evaluation where we're trying to decide how much more do I need to test this? What else do I need to explore? Which makes the model interesting because it's an input to testing, but it's also an output from testing. That's why modeling is so core and key to what we do in software testing. And parts of that model will be stored in our head as a mental model. We may not have any diagrams. We may have a sense of unease that we haven't managed to figure out where it comes from yet. And it's in our head because it's part of our mental model and it can drive some of our testing. Other parts will be visible. We'll have diagrams. We'll have reports. We'll have lists of test ideas. All of these visible parts are also part of our model, but don't take model to mean the visual artifacts, the requirements, the lists. The model ultimately is in your head, which is how testers, different testers, can test differently because they have different models of the process of testing, of the understanding of risks that are involved, of the technology of the systems. All of this changes how we test. Now, the concept of exploring is interesting because exploring a model or using the model as a basis for exploring the system is one of the main ways that we test software. Uh, some of the outputs from this process are captured as part of the model itself in terms of the questions and the risks, but other outputs vary depending on the process we use, depending on the tester. Our execution or exploration logs, our coverage reports, the quest specific questions that we ask, the decisions that we take, ideas for new exploration approaches, issues, issue investigations, the results, the evidence, all of this can be different depending on the tester. Now, exploration itself is usually pursued in small chunks of time to make it easier to document and respond to the information gained during the exploration and to make decisions about what to test or investigate next. The exploration process requires a mapping process and decisions about what to do next. And that changes our model, which then feeds into a new cycle of testing. This is a whole iterative approach to exploring the system to build a model of it, to explore the model, to compare the model, to expand the model. That is a kind of meta model for software testing. So the whole point of this is to say this is the results of what I did during a modeling process and encourage you to create your own models of software testing and evolve them over time. And if you're interested in processes for how to do that, you could have a look at my 
Patreon program where I have courses which are free to all Patreon supporters and you can sign up to Patreon for $1 a month. You can find out more at eviltester.com or patreon.com slash eviltester. Reputate, represent. If I tell you what I'm, And to make decisions about what to test or investigation.